Hello, hello. Welcome back to Boys on Film. I am your host, Phil Marriott, joined by my co-host, Raj Rudolph, once again. Hey, Boys on Film. So today we're talking After Sun, a drama film written and directed by Charlotte Wells. It stars Paul Meskell, Frankie Corio, and Celia Rolson Hall. First, before we do that, and we've got a question on the way as well, can we just talk about this? Have you si- have you read this yet, Raj? Of course not, I haven't read it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know Dusty, you've worked with Dusty, you, you know yeah, 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 David but... Hodge. The Queen of Soho, David Hodge has just released a book called The Boy Who Sat By The Window. I used to do DJ gigs, the odd DJ gig at Tranny Shack, which is one of the clubs you used to run at, oh God, what was that venue called? Actually, it moved, because it moved around the corner, it was the Raymond Review Bar to start with and then it went to gosh that's really triggering the memory base so (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what was that venue called? Because it closed and it reopened recently. Anyway, some really fun times, but this is obviously his life story. Really, really good. I've only got as far as the section where he's talking about when he was like in his early 20s. So he's obviously covered the childhood bit, but really fascinating read. So I would strongly recommend it to anyone who's into kind of queer history and the club scene in London. Really, really good, because obviously he's covering that later on, but I haven't got that far yet. So... I just wanted to mention that. Well worth a look. Right, okay, let's do a question then. So in a second, we're going to decide if After Sun is a Boys on Film banger or if it's a blunder. But first, here's a question for you, Raj, and everybody watching the video as well. Uh, After Sun star Paul Meskell is not only an actor, but he's also a bit of a musician. Which instrument does he play? Any idea, Raj? No. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's a well-known fact. I don't think many people know. So, yeah, a bit of a tricky question, but the answer will be revealed at the end. So keep watching, everyone. Right, let's talk about this film. It's called After Sun. Let's talk about the film before we set the stopwatch. We've got five minutes to decide if it is a, a Boys on Film banger. Um, did you watch Normal People, the series TV series that Paul Mescal was in? No, I feel like there's a lot of no's today, Phil. I think I'm <laughs> no, no. All the way around. No, I haven't. <laughs> Did you watch Lost Daughter, the Lost Daughter with Olivia Coleman movie? Uh, no. I no. I know what that one is. I've, I know about that movie. Because <laughs> he's not been in that many films. I think The Lost Daughter was his feature debut. But yeah, I, I think he's really good. He's, he's quite young. I think he was like born in the 90s, mid-90s. So he's, he's a lot younger than me. I'm not going to say he's a lot younger than you because I I wouldn't want to reveal your age. You should never ask a lady her age. Oh, you make it sound like I'm younger than you. (laughs) Well, you are. You are a bit younger than me. Yeah, should we talk about the story? So it's about an 11-year-old girl who's called Sophie. She's brilliantly played by Frankie Corio. Her and her dad, played by Paul Meskel, take a holiday to Turkey. You know, your average holiday. No frills, I guess you could say. Um, And it's all about their relationship. So it does actually feel... Feature Sophie when she's 20 years older, kind of looking back on that experience, looking back on the experience with her dad, and also discovering and delving back into the parts of his life that she wasn't really aware of. Should we start the stopwatch? Let's go. I was completely engrossed in this film. I really bought into the relationship, the the father and daughter relationship as well. I don't know about you, but I thought she was amazing. Frankie Corio. Yeah, I thought both uh, Paul and Frankie were really great actors. But, you know, for me, these slice of life films never really work. Um, And this was another very slice of life film for me that I just couldn't get into, Phil. Oh, really? Oh, what a shame. (laughs) It It felt really poignant to me. It felt really poetic. And I loved how they you know brought in the final act as well that third act i thought was done so well because throughout the film you're seeing kind of flashes of a club scene and you never really understand why you get an inkling as to what's going to happen it feels feels like there's kind of like an ominous mood it's quite reflective you you know that maybe something bad is going to happen but you're not exactly sure what because obviously most of the film is is them on holiday i mean callum obviously loves his daughter there's a scene that really stands out for me is when they're that they're on a boat and they're and they're talking about kind of her growing older because she's obviously 11 but she seems a lot wiser than a year she seems quite mature for her age and at one point he says to her you know i love you you can tell me anything if you do drugs just find allowing her to experience life for me it just doesn't go anywhere i mean i enjoyed the dialogue i enjoyed the acting but I kind of left the film 
with more questions than I had going in. There wasn't anything that really happens. There's no like anchor point for me that's just drew me in, unfortunately. It is like a slice of life. You're absolutely right, because it does feel like a fly on the wall. I mean, to, to the extent where I think it seemed like the acting was quite improvised. And I, I quite like that because it felt more natural to me. I can totally see why the critics and audiences like it i really wanted to like this movie too like it was like on my must see uh list for london film festival this year and it's powerful in a very quiet way so i think that's why i didn't really enjoy it it took me a couple tries to finish it actually phil so i think i made it to the the bit where um uh she's singing karaoke at the holiday resort and which was cute and everything but I checked out right <laughs> and I'm like this film is just not doing it for me that's a real turning point it shows signs of a fractured relationship because they have an argument because she wants him to come up on stage with her and he doesn't want to <laughs> it's a very passive aggressive argument <laughs> she seems quite carefree and more optimistic than him he, you can sense that he has something niggling he's got a troubled life i think even though he's very supportive of her and he's a loving father maybe he feels a little bit inadequate as a father because there is no authority there whatsoever it was more like you know there's even one point where some guests on the holiday place mistake him for brother and sister the the story is semi-autobiographical the writer director charlotte wells i think there is some element of it that is similar to her life i'm not exactly sure how or, or why but um i found that quite interesting as how it played out because it yeah I, I i found it really emotionally engaging as well and the way it played out i just thought it was kind of theatrical but not overly so so i don't think it overstepped the mark of being over dramatic i think it was quite like you say it it rumbled along quite quite normally in a way and i i think that's what made the end so powerful but yeah i was i was in tears at the end i found it really moving see i wasn't i was just like <laughs> man <laughs> i like the acting but i just i mean it takes a lot of skill to feel like those are real people in real relationships and you know i enjoyed the acting i thought paul and uh they were fine but I just, I don't know, it didn't hook me in for some reason. Usually with some sort of story of this caliber where they're reflecting on the past or some sort of hook that brings them in. I'm not saying that like every movie has to have a traumatic event or a big like centerpiece, but it just felt like a movie without a beginning and a, without a real end. It's just, I think it focused way too much on that holiday bit. So, and to me, it just wasn't engaging. Like I couldn't relate to it whatsoever but that's just me i can see why other people really like this film i could see you know how it could be engaging to you know to other people who've had that sort of relationship and i'm upset at myself for not liking it because i really wanted to like this film we all like a, t a certain type of film and i think if it's not that type of film i think you're you're going to switch off maybe quite early on S well time to find out if after sun is a boys on film banger or if it's a blunder, th this could go either way, I guess. Um, for me, I'm going to score, I'm going to give uh, After Sun a score of 90%. I was completely drawn in. I loved the kind of improvised feel. I loved the fly on the wall feel because, you know, I like a, a lot of other films that are very similar. It had a profound effect on me, particularly the end. I, I just thought it didn't over explain itself either, which is why I, I liked it more, I think. It didn't need to go too dramatic, even though there were dramatic elements. I found it yeah very believable yeah i thought it was great one of the best films of the year for me that's fantastic yeah i'm gonna go with the 65 percent because i need a plot point i need uh i need a story arc and for me it was just one note all the way through okay so combining the scores then it's still a boys or film banger pops the party cannon <laughs> 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 very divided though not just on the screen but we're actually quite divided on this one i'm i'm surprised you didn't love it as much as i thought you would have done i thought you would have you would have been engaged like I said, but i really wanted to i just really i was so excited to you know tuck yeah. into it and it just yeah it just it didn't resonate whatsoever for me so i know if it's hard for me to finish a film then it's not gonna be a banger for me yeah 
Yeah, and it's not something you would revisit. <laughs> Boo! It's definitely a no, isn't it? You started off saying no. It's like, <laughs> that, that was the omen if ever I saw one. So at the beginning of the video, we asked you uh, a question. After Sunstar, Paul Meskell uh, is not just an actor, but he's obviously a musician. What instrument does he play? Raj, you still no ideas? I no ideas, but I'll just uh, say the drums. Well, he's a pianist. He plays the piano. Yeah. So, thanks for watching, everyone. Good to see you, Raj. Um, if you like this video, check out our review of My Policeman, which, talking of being divided, that's a film that you loved and I didn't like at all. So, there we go. I think it's I know, flipped, but well, we reviewed it before you saw it, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, got there first. <laughs>